Coming up next is Don Hopkin, now at Kaleida Software, showing us his gestural interfaces, which he's been promoting for years. In the second part of his talk, he shows us his Pi menus working as a high bandwidth interface for SimCity, allowing a user to naturally create faster than landscapes and clean up ensuing disasters with ease. Central to this interface is the idea of a self-revealing interface, instructions that appear if a user acts slowly, but don't appear for a professional user. Um, you know, once you get used to it, um, you never see the things. And actually, the primary animation, I uh, designed that as negative reinforcement because it slows down interaction. It only does the feedback when you sit still. So if you waste half a second sitting still, you don't waste half a second giving you the pop-up. Now, then you can put roads back down. I'll just try to clean up as quick as possible. This version of SimCity that I'm running is just released and it's for single user, but I'm working on making it support multiple users. And one of the functions of this um, palette here, um, your cursor is color coded to show what tool you've selected. And uh, if other players are in the game, you'll see their cursor. So, um, uh oh, he had a nuclear meltdown. Okay, so let's see. Let me um, clean up from this disaster. There's only so much you can do about radiation. Um, but you've got to stop the fires. Let us use Don Hopkins' playful excavations to remind us that the computer interface should not intrude on the important work that we are trying to use the computer to perform. The next speaker makes us aware of a possible minority report on these issues. Consider the relationship between the paradigm and the way it's presented, between what a person's trying to do and the tools that they have in front of them. Don Norman takes us through a talk called Things That Make Us Smart. He makes a strong case for solving problems rather than focusing on the technology. Don is currently an Apple Fellow at Apple Computer Corporation and a Professor Emeritus at the University of California in San Diego. And then when we saw Sim City, we saw how the top of many indicators really and high and it's very easy to quickly select the various tools you needed to add to the streets and add to bulldoze out fires and uh, change the zoning laws, etc. Somehow, though, I thought this was all really solutions to the wrong problems. So, yes, it was much easier now to in little segments of city or put wires in or uh, bulldoze out of fires. But why were the fires there in the first place? And along the way, we had a nuclear meltdown. He said, oh, nuclear meltdown, and we went away. The linear images caused the meltdown, but the rabbit. The what caused the meltdown? It was a linear image. The linear image. Don't you think a major cause the meltdown was, I mean, the nuclear power plant?
And then how best can I accomplish that? And what are the appropriate tools? And I don't want to work with computers at all. I want to get my job done. John Norman encourages us to build user interfaces that help us focus users on the tasks they're trying to perform. He follows us with Fred Lakin, who demonstrates a user interface as an agent that tries to focus people's attention on the brainstorming session they 